Let's do another example of something that's already in that nice form for us to graph. Tell me everything you know about this. Upside down parabola. You know that it's upside down. What tells you it's upside down? Negative the negative coefficient tells me I'm upside down. Where's your vertex? Uh, negative 1, 2. Negative 1, 2. Let me go ahead and plot that just so we can get a sense of about where things are. Negative 1, positive 2 is right here. What is your axis of symmetry? It's x equals negative 1. That just does not look right. So x equals negative 1 means I'm going to, going to be going through this guy right here. Say again? It is going to be compressed, which means it's going to look what? Short and squatting? Now, let me ask you this. Will you have real x-intercepts? Why do you say yes that you'll have real x-intercepts? Uh, Here's your vertex, and you're going to be opening down, right? So that means you do have to cross here. Let's see if we can figure out where that is. So just like we did before, I'm just going to kind of think about this guy. If I take negative 1 fourth, x plus 1 squared plus 2 equals 0, what would you do here? Wait, I'm trying to solve this equal to zero, though. Oh, sorry. Subtract uh, <coughs> two. I would subtract the two. <coughs> and then what? How do you get rid of that negative one fourth? <laughs> Multiply times negative four, right? So that means we have x plus 1 squared equals positive 8. So it had to be positive, right? Yeah. So that when I take this square root, I get something real. It may not be pretty, but at least it's going to be real. So when I use that square root property to solve this guy, remember your plus or minus, mm -hmm. that means x plus 1 equals what? Plus or minus square root of 8. How do you reduce or simplify the square root of 8? Two squared of 2. So what does x equal? What, oh, we weren't happy with that either? Before this negative 4 could do anything else here, the negative 4 hits this factor. This is all connected through multiplication. So these guys, when they multiply together, they meld and they form 1. Because you pulled the 2 back to the other side of the equal sign. Otherwise right. You right. If, if, if I would kept the 2 over here, and then multiply negative 4 here would be negative 4 times this guy, which is all connected, and negative 4 times this guy, which is negative separated from it. Still We're still going to end up with the same thing. So when I label, when I list my x-intercepts, you're going to say negative 1 plus, <coughs> excuse me, negative 1 plus 2 square roots of 2 comma 0, negative 1 minus 2 square roots of 2 comma 0. They're not pretty. I never said they would be. What's your y-intercept? I'll give you a hint. If I plug in 0 to my original guy up here, plug in 0, what do you get? Uh, one. 1. What's 1 squared? One. Times negative 1 fourth? Negative one fourth plus two is what? This is a positive two and a negative one fourth. Two minus a fourth is what? One and three, one and three quarters. We could say we could actually say the order pair one and three quarters. You could say one point seven five. You could say seven quarters. It, it it doesn't matter. It's all the same. But you know what? We we should go through that point anyway. Whenever I go through and I graph, because remember, like we were talking about yesterday. If you make your vertex your new origin, kind of mark this off. Here's 0, 
one, two, three, four, and so on. Let's see what happens. Now, according to this guy right here, I square and then I divide by four, right? Multiplying times one fourth is the same as dividing by four. So what's one squared? One. So instead of being down here, I'm going to be a fourth of that guy. So I'm going to be right here. Now that's on my y-axis, right? Does that match up with the one and three quarters that we already had? So I feel good about that. When I'm over here at two, what's two squared? Two squared would be down four, but now I have to divide that by four. And what do I get? I get one. What's three squared? Three squared would have been down here, nine units, but what's nine divided by four? You said 2.25. Make it a mixed number. Take that improper fraction of nine over four. Four goes into nine, two times, and a quarter. What about four? 16. Four squared is 16. I can't mark that on here very well. What's 16 divided by four? Go to 5. You get 25, because that's what 5 squared is, right? What's 25 divided by 4? 6 and a quarter, so that's <coughs> 6 and a quarter. Let's go to 6. 6 squared is 36. Divided by 4 is 9, so go down 9 units. If I go over one more, I'm going to run out of space. So the way we got these points is that we took the normal values when I squared 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And once I squared that, what did I do? I divided it by 4. Just like in the last example, I had to multiply it times 2, right? Well, that one was easy because it was 1 fourth, but if it was 3 fourth or 3 seventh or whatever, you still have that, to do yeah, it. Yeah, that, that's ugly. Divide 7, multiply by 3 or whatever. Exactly. If it had been something like 3 quarters, Divide by 4, multiply times 3, the fractions get a lot messier. Yeah. I would try to avoid giving you something like that unless I said, use your graphing calculator and find the <coughs> appropriate graph for that. Now, if I've got these values, I'm going to copy those back over here. So here's the 1 fourth, the 1. 2 and a fourth, 4. We said 6 and a quarter, and then we were down here, 9 units. So just very carefully graph this guy. Do your best <coughs> to draw nice, smooth curves. St. Louis. Yeah, it does look like the St. Louis arch, which I think is a parabola in its shape. Ever been to the top? No. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you can do it. The elevator going up is really weird because if your elevator is not going straight up, it's going like this. Yeah, it's like a borderline. How does that work? You're basically in these, oh, you're in these modules right here. That as it goes up, it has to rock back to keep you it's on the level. level. Yep. It's really, really kind of neat. Now look at what the original guy would have been if you didn't have the one fourth. The one fourth would have, or the regular x squared would have looked like this. That was the guy that jumped off. <laughs> that was the guy that was trying to catch you. <laughs> That's what your original parabola looks like. So you see the one fourth definitely compresses it, makes it look short and squatty. And of course, we have to verify that I'm right. Where's my picture?